Hey everybody, it's Gina Kern. I hope your day is going well. Um, I'm excited to be working on my new Celtic cross today. This one's going to be uh, again for the uh, sunflower drawing that I'm working on and it's twice as big as any other colored pencil drawing or Celtic cross I've ever done before. So I'm super excited. This cross is 19 inches square roughly and most of the others that I've done are about 10 inches square. So um, you know, 19 to 20 inches somewhere in there. So anyway, it's been a fun challenge and, and, and let me do some really intricate patterns in here as well as some things that are bigger. So um, at any rate, I'm getting ready to finish the border right here on the bottom uh, with this Celtic knot pattern over here. And I thought you might kind of like to see a little bit of um, how that, that pattern is drawn. Um, like the maze pattern that I did here, um, it requires a grid pattern, but it's not quite as small and complicated as this maze pattern was. So I've, I've kind of enjoyed that. It's made my life a little easier. But um, you can see here I've got some dots drawn on the paper, and these dots form two columns of boxes. So if you connect with your eye, these four dots here, there's one square, and these four dots here, there's another square. So there's two rows of squares or rectangle shapes drawn throughout this space right here and I've stretched some things out to make the pattern distort a little bit or or adjust to fill the space like I did right here with these knots so it'll be the same pattern we're drawing down here now in order to do this and, and get it to come out accurately you need an odd number of spaces um, throughout the section that you're going to draw it on. So I believe I've got 17 sections drawn here. So there's nine on this side and eight on this side. Okay. So then the next step is going to be to put a dot in the center of each of these squares. And then we'll show you the, um, the, uh, the layout of the grid or the, the, the breaking lines as I believe they're called, um, that the pattern kind of flows around. So, let me get my digital camera started recording here um, so that I can capture um, what I'm doing is capturing the whole process on film so I can put together some speed drawing videos um, and have those as a as a bonus gift for people who choose to uh, uh, order this print during the pre-sale phase. So um, get that started recording. There we go. All right. So first step is to draw the little dots in the center of each box. So I look for, you know, with my eye, where do these two lines intersect? and put a dot at approximately that spot. Okay, so there, uh, there. So again, just observing with my eye where the four corners of the square are and then where do those diagonal lines from those corners intersect. So it takes a little bit to kind of train your eye to pick those up without having to, you know, draw the lines out yourself um, to just be able to do it by eye, but uh, kind of fun to see it kind of snap into place. So these dots that I'm drawing now will be the dots that we use to draw the breaking lines on for the pattern um, that the, the, the lines of the pattern were kind of flow around. So just a few more to do here. And it's okay if, you know, I don't get exactly in the middle because I always go back and kind of fine tune the pattern anyway to make sure it's flowing well and, and filling the space um, in a pleasing way. You know, so. Whoops. Where? There. Sorry, <laughs> there's an extra dot here to help me draw these patterns. So I was like, where's my square? <laughs> All right, so there are the center dots. So now we're gonna connect these dots with some breaking lines. So we do here, connect those two dots there, and then this one, and then we skip to the next one and connect those dots like so, and skip to the next one. And just like that. And another longer one there. And then just this dividing line right there. 
Okay, so now we get to start flowing the pattern in and around um, these breaking lines. So we'll just start with this one here. It doesn't really matter. You can kind of decide on your own where you want to start, but this line is going to flow through here and then it's going to come down through this pattern and connect to this kind of breaking line here flows around these dots and it's going to come up into these two breaking lines and form kind of a corner here and then flows back down and around through here comes back up through these holes right there and around and we repeat so it's going to curve down through here come up to these breaking lines form that corner back down through this hole up through this column and around that breaking line Curves through that breaking line back over here, forms the corner, back through that hole, up through this hole, around that breaking line, and so on and so forth. And again, as I said, right now I'm just kind of getting uh, the basic idea of where these lines are going to flow. Um, and I will go back and adjust as I thicken them up to make them look pretty. So now when we get to this breaking line here, this line is just going to come up and around and now it's going to connect to the spiral in this corner like that roughly. Okay. And then we'll start. Let's see. I'm going to work back from this way over here. Might be a little easier. So then we come off of here and it comes through this gap around that breaking line and then this one's going to come through here and make the loops and all the other spaces that we missed with the first line. I kind of like the way this pattern, not pattern, swirls or creates a circle and I kind of feel like it fits with the swirls that I've got going in the maze pattern as well as the triscal pattern there in the main arm of the uh, cross. So that's kind of fun. I, you know, sunflowers, um, their symbolism from Victorian times is that of adoration. So that's kind of the, uh, I think what I'm going to use is the title for the piece um, and kind of, you know, the, the, the meaning and the symbolism that I'm trying to work things around. And I kind of feel like when we adore something, uh, you know, our thoughts swirl around that thing. They rotate around that thing. So I've just found myself gravitating towards a lot of swirling and curved patterns with this piece. Um, and that, you know, I don't ever really expect people to, to take the same meaning out of my work as I do. It's just, I, I like to have that symbolism there and that, you know, guiding, um, underlying meaning just for myself. Um, so it, it just kind of helps me to choose what types of patterns I want to use and just have a focus for the piece and come up with a title for it. So just something that I like to do, but again, I don't ever expect anybody else to take the same meaning from my work as I do. I think that's one of the great things about art is that we all walk away from a piece of art with having a different experience and, and finding a different meaning or, or feeling from the piece, whatever that might be. So, um, Anyway, that's kind of the focus I'm taking with this piece is that of adoration and, and swirling around um, the object that we are adoring. And, you know, for me, that's my faith. But um, anyway, this pattern originally, if I remember correctly, was used on or found on the Arda chalice or brooch. I can't remember exactly which, but at any rate, it's a piece of famous Celtic jewelry uh, from Ireland or, or, you know, art metalwork in Ireland. So, um, I don't know. I think it just creates a really fun pattern and I really enjoy it. So trying to think this through. All right. So this is going to go over here, comes around here and it's going to connect with our spiral there. So where does this need to go? Okay. Clear out here and kind of through there. So there's the rough outline of the pattern 
And as I said, I'll kind of fine tune and, and tweak things and see where it needs to be adjusted and then go through and thicken up all of the lines um, as I did here in this pattern. So any rate, and then, you know, figure out what, what line's going to overlap and which line's going to go under. And that alternates, as you can kind of see here through this pattern. So it goes, you know, under and then over and under and over. So um, any rate, hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek behind the scenes. I'm excited to share more of the journey with you. I'll still need to figure out kind of what I'm going to do to fill in some of the other parts of the cross, but I am very nearly done designing this pattern and that's super exciting. So I get to start drawing some sunflowers before too long. So yay. Hope you all have a great day and we will talk to you later.